Welcome to this video, great to see you're back. If you watched the last video of this series, you know why we might want to use regular expressions. In this video, we'll now dive into how we create patterns and how they actually work. So let's start and we will start on regex101.com, a page I don't own, I don't get any money for mentioning it, it's just a great page for working and testing and playing around with regular expressions. So let's dive into that. So as mentioned, I'm on regex101.com and the page is very simple to understand but very powerful and a great playing ground. You have an input line where you can insert your regular expression pattern without these slashes. So you can just start typing your pattern like LL. And then you have the string below it, which you want to check like hello there. And you immediately see that it marks all occurrences of your pattern it finds. Now this pattern also has one flag enabled by default. Flags are basically just additional configurations you can set up on your patterns. Here it's the global flag which makes sure that it doesn't stop after finding one hit, it'll match all occurrences of this pattern. So if I have hello there, it'll be awesome. It also matches the second, second LL. If I were to disable global, only the first one was matched. This is how it works with the pattern and the string. And on the right here, you even get explanation of the given pattern you entered. It basically explains why it matched something. And here it simply explains that LL matches the characters LL and only these two characters following each other and in a case sensitive way. Then you get some detailed information about the match, where it found the match. And then at the bottom you have a quick reference of all the commands and special characters you can use in regular expression patterns. And of course, we will walk through many of them over the next videos. So this is a very basic match here, LL, not too exciting. Let's say we want to match the hello world uh, word. And of course, we can do this by simply entering hello there. Maybe don't mistype it. Now let's say we would have hello, hello, but the second hello starts with a lowercase character. It's not matched because our matching strategy is case sensitive. There are two ways of still getting a hit on the second hello too, if we wanted to have that. First, we could add an additional flag, the I flag for insensitive. Insensitive, as the name suggests, simply means it doesn't care for the casing. If you set this flag, now the second hello is also matched because it's done in an insensitive, a case insensitive way. Now let me turn this off though, because I want to make this or have this work in a different way. You can also do something else and create an alternative to the capital H. You can wrap the capital H in parentheses to create a group basically and then add the pipe symbol and then the alternative like a lowercase h. And now you see both strings are matched. The h is marked as green because it's in our group but the match is the full word and you get the explanation on the right. We have a capturing group, that capturing part is something I'll come back to in a later video. And then we have our two alternatives in that group, uh, uppercase and a lowercase h. This already is our first a little more complex pattern because we have more flexibility there. It's especially useful if you think about the alternative if you were not to use regular expressions. If you had to check this with normal if conditions, you would have to check if a given string contains hello with a capital H or if a given string contains hello with a lowercase h. Certainly doable, but as you got more and more conditions, you have to add more and more if statements, whereas here you just have to add more and more logic to your pattern, which is definitely an improvement and makes it much easier the more complex your pattern grows and you start to feel the effects very early. Now let's say we want to take it even further and we also wanted to match hello. Now clearly it's not matched right now because we match hello with a lowercase or uppercase h. So what we would need to do to also match hello is we would have to make something optional, the h. Now we do this by adding a question mark after our group. This simply means 
the part immediately prior to the question mark is optional. So the uppercase or lowercase h is in the end optional. It doesn't matter. That's why LO is also matched. Now important, if I were to add the question mark after the E, LO is not matched. So the question mark does not mean everything in front of it is optional, just the direct character in front of it. So in this case only the E would be optional. If you want to make everything in front of it optional, you would have to group it again. So now LLO is also matched. But that's of course not the goal here. I want to make the H optional. This is how we build these patterns. We think about what we want to achieve and then we get a rich feature set of rules we can pick off or pick from to construct this. Now we only started with groups, alternatives and optional characters. We already got some nice tools though. Now in the next video I also want to dive into how we can match full words if a part of the word fulfills a certain criteria and how we can add more cool rules to get really powerful matchings and checks with regular expressions. Can't wait to see you there. Bye.